Welcome to St. John's. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. Thank you all for joining us, both virtually and in person. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, a warm welcome to you. Our service continues on page one of your service booklet with the Latin greeting. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
first letter is from the book of Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandment, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandments are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put, in, put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealous, jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read responsibly Psalm 119, found on page two. <clears throat> How shall a young man cleanse his way? By keeping to your words. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my heart. That I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in your statutes. With my lips will I recite. All the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your decrees. Than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments. And give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, Take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. 
Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. The Gospel of the Lord. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, St. John's. Good morning. This Lent, we have been reflecting on the life and faith of Peter, one of Jesus' most celebrated disciples. In Peter, we see a reflection of ourselves, imperfect, yet deeply loved and called by God. Today, on this fifth Sunday of Lent, our focus turns to forgiveness. In today's gospel reading, Jesus instructs the disciples on how to deal with conflict with, within the Christian community. So step one, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. In other words, if a fellow believer hurts you, go and tell him or her. Don't go around telling other people. Work it out between the two of you. If that person listens to you while well, you've made a friend. Step two, if you're not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. So if he or she won't listen to you, take one or two others from your community to keep things honest and try again. Step three, if the member refuses to listen, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. So you know, the tensions and trials which arise from the sins that we commit against one another have not only an impact on an individual level, but on the community as a whole. So if the person is still unrepentant, will not listen to the, your concern, tell the church, bring it to the community. If he or she won't listen to the church, well then, you'll have to start over again from scratch. 
You'll have to confront him or her with the need for repentance and offer again God's forgiving love, just as you would to someone outside of this community, a Gentile or a tax collector. Jesus says, truly I tell you, whether you bind on the earth, what you, what, whether, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among you. I love the translation from the Message Bible. It says, a yes on earth is a yes in heaven. A no on earth is a no in heaven. What you say to one another is eternal. When two of you get together on anything at all on earth and make a prayer of it, my Father in heaven goes into action. And when two or three of you are together because of me, you can be sure that I'll be there. Now, Peter, who was rebuked by Jesus in last week's gospel for focusing on human worries instead of divine things, is eager to learn from Jesus and ask him, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? I'm sure that seemed a lot. Jesus' response, however, challenges conventional notions of forgiveness. He says... Not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. Jesus is telling Peter that when it comes to forgiveness, it is not about a set number of times, but about boundless grace. That is, forgiveness has no limit. Forgiveness, my dear friends, is a transformative act. Just as Peter learned about abundant grace from Jesus, we too are called to embody this grace in our lives. Now, forgiveness isn't always easy. It requires courage, humility, and faith. It's a journey towards healing and wholeness where we confront both the hurt inflicted upon us and the wounds that we cause others. But in forgiveness, we find freedom and peace. Archbishop Desmond Tutu writes in the forgiveness book that there have been times when each and every one of us has needed to forgive. There have also been times when each and every one of us needed to be forgiven. And there will be many times because of our human nature in our own ways, we are all broken. Out of that brokenness, we end up hurting others despite our best efforts. Forgiveness is the journey we take toward healing the broken parts of ourselves and our community. It is how we become whole again. Whether you're facing a bully who tor torments you daily at school or work, betrayal by a spouse or friend or other relative, a boss who continuously unjustly passes you over for a promotion, or we all drive here in this area, the driver who cut you off during your morning commute. We will all face a choice to forgive or to seek revenge. We face this choice of whether or not to forgive as individuals, as families, as communities, and as a deeply connected world. Each time we help and each time we harm, we can have a dramatic impact on the world. We can choose whether it's gonna be a good impact or a bad impact. Because we are human, some of our interactions go wrong. 
and then we will hurt or be hurt, or both. It is the nature of being human, and it's unavoidable. Forgiveness is the way we set those interactions right. It is the way we mend tears in our social fabric, in our community. It is the way we stop our human community from unraveling. The example of Jesus illuminates this path for us. Even in his darkest hour, he forgave those who portrayed and crucify him. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. His radical forgiveness reminds us that even in the face of evil, there is hope and redemption and reconciliation. But forgiveness isn't just about others. It's about ourselves. When we hold on to anger and resentment, we harm ourselves physically, mentally, and spiritually. Research shows that forgiveness leads to better health and well-being, freeing us from the chains of bitterness and resentment. Yet, I think it's important to say that forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting or excusing wrongdoing. As Bishop Tutu notes, the traumas we have witnessed or experienced live in our memories. They actually, scientists believe they live in our DNA. Even years later, trauma can cause us to feel the pain freshly each time we remember it. I ask you today, are you hurt and suffering? Is the injury new or is it an old, unhealed wound? Know that what was done to you was wrong, unfair, and undeserved. And you are right to be outraged. And it's perfectly normal to want to hurt back when you have been hurt. But the problem is that hurting back rarely satisfies. We think it will, but it doesn't. Retaliation gives at best only momentary respite from our pain. The only way to experience healing and peace is to follow Jesus' example and forgive. Until we forgive, we remain locked in our pain and locked out of the possibility of experiencing healing and freedom, locked out of the possibility of being at peace. Without forgiveness, we remain tethered to the person who harmed us. We are bound with the chains of bitterness, tied together, trapped. Until we can forgive the person who harmed us, that person will hold the keys to our happiness. That person will be our jailer. When we forgive, we take back control of our own fate and our feelings. We become our own liberators. We don't forgive to help the other person. We don't forgive for others. We forgive for ourselves. Research shows that people who are more forgiving report fewer health and mental problems and fewer physical symptoms of stress. Medical and psychological studies have shown that a person holding on to anger and resentment is at an increased risk for anxiety, depression, and insomnia, and is more likely to suffer from high blood pressure, ulcers, migraines, backaches, heart attack, and even cancer. But the reverse is also true. Genuine forgiveness can transform these ailments. And when stress, anxiety, and depression are reduced, so are the accompanying physical disorders. All that is to say, forgiving is good for you. Health benefits are only the beginning. To forgive is also to release yourself from whatever trauma and hardship you have experienced and reclaim your life as your own. Now you may wonder if some acts are beyond forgiveness. 
the tragic shooting at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston serves as a poignant example. Now, Charleston, South Carolina was one of the major ports through which enslaved Africans were brought to the United States. It's estimated that approximately 40% of all the African slaves brought to North America came through that port in Charleston. Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church, also known as Mother Emmanuel, was founded in 1817 during the time when many blacks, many of the black population was still enslaved. It is the oldest AME church in the South. Almost nine years ago, Dylan Roof, a self-proclaimed white supremacist, walked into Mother Emmanuel and was welcomed into the Bible study class that was meeting that evening. After some time in the Bible study class, he opened fire and murdered nine people. Authorities believe that he targeted this particular church because of his history and status in the community. But somehow, through this tragedy, many of the people affected by the hate crime were able to forgive Ruth. In Emmanuel, a documentary about the aftermath of the shooting, family members of some of the victims recount how only 48 hours after having lost their mothers, sisters, sons, husbands, and wives, they appeared in court for Ruth's bond hearing. And what transpired was something no one could have anticipated and they didn't plan. The judge presiding over Ruth's bond hearing invited them to come up to make statements. Nadine Collier was one of those people. She lost her mother when given the chance to speak, she looked at Dylan Roof and said, I forgive you. You took something really precious from me. I will never talk to her again. I will never be able to hold her again, but I forgive you and have mercy on your soul. She said this as she was fighting back tears. Now, while not everyone was readily able to forgive Ruth for his actions, a few other family members stood up and followed suit and forgave him. Forgiving Ruth at his bond hearing, again, wasn't planned, wasn't premeditated, it just happened. Each family member that forgave Ruth described a feeling of freedom and peace coming over them with their words of forgiveness. Chris Singleton lost his mother, and he wasn't there at the courthouse, but later on, he also forgave Dylan Ruth. He says, he wanted to, it wasn't just about his mother. At the time, you have to remember, this was right after, soon after the shooting in Ferguson, Missouri erupted over Michael Brown's shooting, and there was concern about how a violence in Charleston. Chris Singleton stood up and forgave Ruth, Dylan Ruth because he said he didn't want to see violence in his city. Instead, he wanted to bring people together because he knew that one of the things that Dylan Roof, from his writings we know, that he believed that he was gonna start a race war. So Chris Singleton found solace in the fact that the community reacted in a way that was quite the opposite of what Dylan Ruth had planned. He noted that oftentimes we think of forgiveness as an act of submission, that it means that you're weak. But he's realized that forgiving is so much tougher than holding a grudge. 
that it takes more courage to forgive than it does to say, I'm going to be upset about whatever, is going, about whatever happened to me forever. Because of these acts of these families, instead of a race war, people in Charleston and beyond were brought together. Over 10,000 people showed up in Charleston in the days after the tragic shooting to pray with and support the people of Mother Emanuel. Now, I had heard about these acts of forgiveness, and so I, I watched this documentary, trying to understand what would move people to forgive such a heinous crime. What would they say? And after watching it, I can only tell you one conclusion. It was Jesus. It was Jesus on the cross praying for those who were torturing him. It was Jesus saying, there is no limit to forgiveness. For in the Christian tradition, we are reminded that even the most sinful can be redeemed. The story of the repentant criminal crucified beside Jesus exemplifies this truth. Forgiveness is always possible, and reconciliation is always within reach. As we know from our study during this Lent, Peter betrayed a friendship and denied Jesus not once, but three times, and was forgiven and became the cornerstone of the church, the rock upon which the church was built. Paul, the violent persecutor of those faithful to the fledgling Christian faith, became the planter of Christian communities in the Gentile world. So, in what had to be the darkest hours, the families of the Emmanuel Nine that were able to forgive leaned on Jesus and found not only peace for themselves, but for their community. So when I'm asked whether some people are beyond forgiveness, my answer is no. Now don't get me wrong, I'm heartbroken over the cruelty and suffering I have seen human beings unjustly and merc mercilessly inflict upon one another. The tragedy occurring in Gaza, the suffering in Haiti, I mean there are whole, um, there are whole channels devoted to crime and and all the evil that people have done upon, and harm have inflicted upon each other. The repeated school shootings, which seem to garner nothing more than the thoughts and prayers. Yet, still, I know and believe that forgiveness is always called for and reconciliation is always possible. For the good news is that we don't have to do it alone. We don't have to do the hard work of forgiveness alone. For Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there among them. He didn't say where two or three are gathered and they are all in agreement and everything's great. He said, where two or three are gathered, I am there. Even when the two or three are in conflict and not hearing one another, Jesus is there, and, it isn't, and isn't that when we really need him to be there? Jesus is there. He is present right here. His presence is real whenever we are gathered in his name, both in agreement and in sin. And what Jesus did for Peter and Paul, he can do for me, he can do for you, he can do for this community, he can do for this country. As we navigate the complexities of forgiveness, let us remember the words of Archbishop Tutu. There is nothing that cannot be forgiven, and there is no one undeserving of forgiveness. 
Forgiveness is the key that unlocks the chains of resentment and bitterness, setting us free to embrace a future filled with love and grace. If you are struggling to forgive someone, call on Jesus. If you are struggling to forgive yourself, call on Jesus. He is present right here and is with us now because we're gathered here in his name. And there is power in his name to break every chain that bounds us. Whether it's, excuse me, whether it's bitterness, whether it's anger, whether it's confusion, Jesus will break every chain. Just call his name. He is here to set you free from any hurt or pain that is keeping you from living a life filled with love and grace. Pray on it, and our Father in heaven will go into action for you. Now, in the Koza language spoken among many in South Africa, if you want to ask for forgiveness, the words used translate in English to, I ask for peace. That is, let us be united and not at odds with one another. Let us be at peace. So my beloved community, let us embrace the transformative power of forgiveness. Let us extend grace to others as freely as it has been given to us by our Father in heaven through our Lord Jesus Christ. And let us walk this journey together knowing that in forgiveness we find healing, redemption, and ultimately we find peace. May the boundless grace of God inspire us to forgive as we have been forgiven. Amen. And now let us firm, affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page four of your booklet. We believe in one God. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. The praise of the people, form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. 
We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. And that our Lord may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let thy perpetual shine upon them. And we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. We pray for the sick and shut ins. We entrust to your God all those in need of your healing grace and comfort in their lives. We pray for those having surgery today. Pray for doctors and nurses and all who are in charge of their care. We pray for those grieving the loss of loved ones. We pray for the nations of the world and their leaders. We pray for an end to the wars taking place in the world today, especially in Ukraine and Gaza. On this day, we lift up the people of Haiti. Let us pray. Anou la prière. O bon Dieu, c'est où qui créate tout l'univers. Tant de rel Haïti, tant pris by moun kap soufri nan pauvreté, violence, ak indifférence, force, courage, ak délivrance. Touche ke moun ki gen pouvoir yo, ak moyen, pou yo si span violence la. Encourage e renforce moun kap travay, san pran souf, pou sove la vi piti tou yo. Nou mande yo pou voye l'espri yo, ak gras ou bay pep haïsien, pou la pe, ak yon demen mi yo, a trafe piti tou yo, Sauvez-nous en Jésus-Christ. Amen. O oh God, creator of the universe, hear the cries of Haiti. Give strength, courage, and deliverance to those suffering from poverty, violence, and indifference. Touch the hearts of those who have the power and means to stop the violence. Encourage and strengthen those working tirelessly to save lives. Send your spirit and grace to the Haitian people for peace and a better tomorrow. Through your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We pray for those celebrating a birthday, anniversary, or traveling this week. May the Lord bless you and keep you this day and all the rest of your life. Amen. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. 
my sisters, my brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Thank you for your presence with us on this, our fifth Sunday of Lent. We are grateful that you have joined us both in person and online. We offer, we offer a warm welcome to all our visitors, to our worshipers at home. Please know that you are welcome to use your own bread and wine or juice so we can all share in Holy Communion. The theme of our Lenten journey this year is Wandering Heart, Figuring Out Faith with Peter. I encourage you to read the devotion for this week. You can find the link in the back of the service booklet and the weekly newsletters. We invite you to join us on Wednesday at noon for our midweek healing service on Zoom. The vestry will meet on Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. On Thursday evening, I invite you to join our Lenten series with Stations of the Cross from 7 to 8 p.m. also on Zoom. See Tuesday's newsletter for Zoom login information. Sunday, next Sunday, March 24th, is Palm Sunday. In the back of the service booklet, you can find the worship schedule for Palm Sunday, Holy Week, and Easter. Please note that we will have two services on Easter Sunday, 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. We will have an Easter egg hunt after the 11.30 a.m. service. We also encourage you to turn in your altar flowers request form this week for Easter. Join us on Saturday, April 6, 2024 at 2 p.m. for our SIP and PET fundraiser. For more information, please pick up a flyer on the glass table in the narthex, or you can visit our website. Please read the announcements in the back of the service bulletin that will give you more information. Now I invite you to please turn to page five of your service booklet for the offertory sentence. Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you, love one another as I have loved you. And so walk in love as Christ loved us and give himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God together. Each of us must give as we have made up our mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. The offertory hymn is Love Your Neighbor and Forgive. The words are found on page six. The congregation may remain seated. We will invite you to stand at the end of verse three. And we will repeat verse 1 as the offering is brought forward.
we offer this Holy Communion to glorify Almighty God and in thanksgiving for God's many blessings, especially for the gift of Jesus' forgiveness in our lives. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, 
presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. My sisters, my brothers, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Amen. Please be seated. All present for in-person worship are invited to receive Holy Communion. If you do not wish to receive communion, we invite you to come forward for a blessing, indicated by crossing your arms over your chest. If you are worshiping from home and have used your own bread and wine or juice during the Great Thanksgiving prayer, you may use the following words before consuming the bread and wine or juice. Oh God, bless this bread and this wine or juice I now consume. Amen.
Amen. We continue the post-communion prayer of thanksgiving. Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters, my brothers, life is short and we don't have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. And so, be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, that your words, which 